Dr. Patricia Beddoes, and I'm the assistant chair uh, at Northwestern University in the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences. I specialize in karst hydrology, which means that I spend as much time as I can underground in flooded caves. These are places that most people will never ever see, and simply getting into these caves can be a technical challenge, and the conditions can be pretty harsh on field equipment. Most communities though that rely on groundwater, there's a lot of communities that rely on groundwater to meet their basic needs. Most people there just simply are unaware that their daily activities, you know, development and land use changes are having profound, profound effects on the underground systems. This is especially true in coastal areas where the development is often rapid and, and very concentrated. And this development is outpacing the resources available to monitor the environment. In the past, I've used oceanographic instruments to track water flowing through these flooded caves, but wrestling these large and heavy beasts into uh, the caves using lift bags was challenging because the instruments were simply weren't designed to operate in constrained environments. This kind of approach of trying to fit a square peg into a round hole situation is pretty common in field research. And when your research questions become more specialized, sometimes even, even trying to get a hold of a bad fitting solution, even if you can afford it, it just simply isn't available. So after some expensive equipment failures and some trials a couple of years ago, Ed Mallon and I decided to try developing custom instruments that would be tough enough to survive in the hands of myself and my students, but inexpensive enough to be deployed in large numbers to create monitoring networks to track environmental change. We started with a small pendulum style flow meter that would be much easier to install in the caves. Uh, these early builds were fairly crude, but even without calibration, they worked better than the ocean sensors. Over the course of many deployments since then, over many months, the loggers have matured into a robust underwater platform, which we now call the Cave Pearl. The system is built around the Arduino because I was a newcomer to the world of electronics at the beginning of the project. The abstraction provided by the IDE and by open source libraries enabled me to achieve something functional right at the beginning when I was still learning the basics. And rapid open source hardware development meant that I could simply adopt each generation of smaller, more energy efficient boards while I concentrated on better underwater housings. As you Im might imagine, putting electronics underwater for long periods of time has also led to plenty of failures. But the key to moving forward at each stage was to break the design into sections and solve each piece of that puzzle on its own. The final result of all this trial and error was a logger built by connecting a few off-the-shelf breakout boards with jumper wires. But even without a custom PCB or any really advanced power optimization, we're now seeing more than a year of operation on a few AA's. And that one year mark is pretty important for environmental monitoring because it allows you to capture all of the seasonal variations on one instrument record. Now that we've proven the basic logger works in a field environment, we're testing a, a range of sensors for durability and exploring how to calibrate the inexpensive ones to improve their accuracy. We have two standard housings, one for above the water table and one for below the water. And each generation of loggers that I build refines some other aspect of the physical construction. I'm always on the lookout for ways to improve the basic three component core that doesn't add more complexity. Uh, and the code is as modular as the hardware. So we've arrived at a fairly generic plan where adding a new combination of sensors to the logger can be done with little effort. The irony is that this lowest common denominator approach using ordinary batteries or plain CSV files has ended up addressing some fairly major points from the wish list that Trish gave me at the start of the project. 
many of the power optimization choices made by commercial equipment designers actually end up being trade-offs against ease of use in the field. Um, for example, you'd be surprised how many commercial units don't have a status indicator LED. But after an hour bouncing along a rough road out to your field site, you really need some way to know that everything's still working okay before you install it. Our next step is to get these into the hands of as many people as possible so that they can start using them for their own research projects. You know, over the years, I've worked with so many dedicated people who knew about problems with their groundwater aquifers, but they struggled to obtain even a single commercial sensor. And even when they could get a hold of a single high-end piece of equipment, they still had the challenge of trying to characterize what is really a complex system from a single or a small number of points of observation from locations. When you're talking about something as dynamic as water flow, you really need a network of sensors installed over a long period of time in order to understand the bigger picture. And that is what we're trying to enable here. And I believe that the cave pearl loggers have the potential to make this, this type of research possible for more people around the globe by lowering the economic and technological barriers. When you're dealing with something as fundamentally important as water resources, it is so important to have more people involved in understanding the state of their environment so that we all can flourish and survive.